Hey, what is up, guys? Welcome back to the show. Hope all is well in the world of programming. Uh, welcome back to episode two of our Firebase social login series. Now, in the very last episode, we talked about how to integrate the Facebook login SDK by installing it via Cocoa Pods. And so let me just show you quickly what that looks like, just to remind you guys. On our screen, we have our login button with Facebook. Upon clicking this, we can initiate the authentication process, fill in our credentials, and then Facebook hands back the user to our application. And at the very bottom of the console, it prints out successfully logged in with Facebook. So all that's working well. Uh, if you missed out on that video, please uh, go ahead and watch that using the link in the description below. And so the question now is, what are we going to learn for today's video? And the first thing is to actually get the email address from our Facebook user. And this is useful because if you want to create a user, perhaps in your database, you're going to uh, probably need the user's email. And the second thing to kind of go over is how we can implement a custom login button for the, uh, the Facebook authentication process. And so some applications like Spotify has this uh, Facebook button that matches their look and feel for their application. And if you have a custom design, you probably want to implement your own button as well. So that's that. And finally, if we have enough time today, I'm gonna show you guys how to take your Facebook app to uh, production, pretty much taking it off of development mode. Uh, this way, uh, any user can actually log into your Facebook application, not just your own account. Okay, so hope that sounds good. Let's go ahead and begin with some code in uh, Xcode here. And let's take a look. Now, before we start coding, let me show you kind of what all of this will eventually look like. So this application contains five buttons. Uh, the top two buttons are the Facebook buttons. This button right here, the custom Facebook login button, will hand me back my uh, user, but it also gives me my email address of that Facebook account. So that's kind of where we want to get to today. Okay, so that's that. Let me go back here. And this is our current application. So I'm going to run this and show you that nothing has changed just yet. All we have is just one log out button. So if I log out of there, I can actually log back in. So that's a pretty good place to start. And I want to uh, start off today by showing you how to get the email address after I click on that button. So here we go. At the very bottom, we have this successfully logged in with Facebook print statement. And if I instead initialize something called a Facebook uh, graph request by saying FBSDK graph request, we can use a graph path of slash me, and that just gets your user profile. You can think of it that way. And for the parameters, we want to specify a dictionary here that uh, is going to have a key of fields. And in here, we'll say ID, name, and email. Okay, and actually we need a colon instead of a comma. So this is going to get our ID, name, and email for that Facebook account. So to kind of kick off this request, we have to call this start method on graph requests. And for this uh, completion handler, I'm just hit enter, and we get these three parameters, which will be connection, uh, result, and error like that. Okay, so let's just see what we get here. So print one, two, three, and we can probably remove this print statement, but let's just keep it there for now. I'm gonna run the application and try to log in to see what is being printed in the console down below. So hit login, hit okay, application comes back, and then we have these two print statements. So that's uh, quite nice and kind of demonstrates that everything is working with this graph request. So removing those print statements, I want to first check if error is not equal to nil. We're going to say print uh, failed to start graph request and print out the error as well. Next, we just return if the error is actually something important to us. Now, in the case of a successful graph request, we want to print out 
this thing called result. Okay, and this result is just that right there. Pretty much Facebook hands us back a package of information that is going to um, be kind of according to what the parameters uh, are right here. So let's just see log out, log out, log back in, and it's going to give us some information right here. So this is the actual result that's being printed containing email ID and name down below. So this is how you would actually get the email address of your user. Now, one thing that's very important that you can't really see in my demo right now is that you might need to specify certain read permissions on your login button. In other words, if I specify login button read permissions, this needs to be an array. And if you are not seeing your email address printed on the bottom console, make sure to specify uh, email inside of the read permissions. And if you want to specify something else, perhaps public profile, you can do that as well. So let's run this guy. Mm. And now if we log out and log back in, you're going to see pretty much the exact same thing being printed out on the bottom of the console right there. And that's how that kind of works. Um, if we go back to this demo here, let's now take a look at how we want to uh, initialize the authentication with a custom login button. So remember, that custom login button can potentially look like whatever Spotify has right there. So let's go back to our app here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to add that bottom button right below this uh, default FB SDK button. So going back to view to load, I'm going to add our custom uh, FB login button here. And let's just say let custom FB button equals UI button right here and custom FB button dot perhaps background color equals dot blue. I think that works. And now what do we want to do? We want to say view dot add sub view of custom FB button. Now it's not going to show up if I run the application because the button doesn't really have a frame layout to it. So I'm going to copy this entire frame guy and go down here and say custom uh, frame equals the CG rect. Now I'm going to add uh, 50 or 66 pixels to this because of height of 15 and a gap of 16. So that's how I'm arriving to this 116 value. And we get our blue button right here. Now it's going to look awfully plain right now. And I'm going to specify uh, a title on it, which will say custom FB login, uh, login here. And for the state of normal, and this will give me a white label that says custom FB login here. And let's just wait for the app to load. That's what it looks like. If you want to stylize this button a little bit, you can actually get access to the title label specifying the font of UI font bold system font of let's say 16. So that's going to obviously change the font to something a little thicker and usually buttons inside of iOS are uh, a little thicker, which kind of uh, means that it's a little more clickable. And there we go. So clicking on this doesn't really do much. You'll notice that it actually doesn't have a like a down state to it either. To get the down state, you want to specify a type of dot system for your UI button, and that'll give you a down state. Uh, anyhow, let's move on to adding an action onto this Facebook button. So add target, let's see, target itself. Action is this selector guy right here, which is going to be a function called handle custom FB login for an event of touch up inside. And what that means is whenever I tap on this button, I will execute this function here and we'll just print out one, two, three, four. And uh, so this is something I actually like doing in all of my programs while I'm developing new code. I just want to print out something to verify that the actual button will do something. So click on there, you get one, two, three, four. 
and one, two, three, four. So why is this button a little dark? Or why is the text a little dark? I think it's because uh, the button needs to actually specify a title color of white, and that should give you a white button. So moving on, what should we do if we are uh, in the case of actually hitting this button? And if we want to initialize the authentication process uh, like this right here, we actually have to call login on our Facebook manager, okay? So to do that, you want to specify something called FB SDK login manager. So this will create a new instance of it. So these two parentheses right here. And here we'll say log in with read permissions. Now read permissions, this is the um, actual array that we want to specify right here, just like above. If you don't specify these two, um, these two strings, you might not get the information that you're seeking from your Facebook user. Uh, view control view controller will be so with a handler. So I'm going to hit enter there. We get result and we get error. So if error is not equal nil, no, we'll say uh, FB login failed error right here. And then returning out of this completion block. So let's just make this a little more descriptive. And there we go. And let's see. What do we want to do if we are successfully logged in? Well, let's just print dot result dot, I think we have a token and token string. So don't worry too much about what these tokens are. It's just uh, a convenient way for Facebook to make sure you are the correct user. So hitting that gives me my Facebook authentication, hit okay. And then now on the bottom, we get this really, really cryptic uh, access token string, and that's kind of how we know the authentication process has worked. So question now is how do we get the email address to show up every time we tap on this button? So that's quite easy if you take out, let's see, if you go back to the previous um, authorization of hitting this top button up here and logging in, we get this FB SDK graph request which I can grab out. So I'm going to cut this and then down here, I'm going to say function, uh, wraps show email address. And there it is. That's the entire function. And let's see, ba, ba, ba. we can say show email address. I believe that works. So, okay. That looks good. And also down here, we can say, instead of printing out this cryptic token string, we'll say it show email address. I believe we need a self on the left side. So in other words, all this is doing is it's executing this uh, graph request, getting us the ID, name, and email. So let's hit that, log in, and here we go. Everything is being shown just like it was before. So that's uh, kind of the gist of what I wanted to show you guys today. Now, one more thing I want to go over if I'm, uh, doing okay on time. It looks like I'm okay. I want to show you guys what happens if I log out of my user. So I'm currently logged in on Safari as this user of that entire Facebook account as Brado Pinto. And down here, if I log out, let's just see what happens. I'm logged out. And I have a bunch of other test accounts, right? So if I hit this right here, and now it's trying to tell me to log in as just any user. So I'm gonna show you guys what happens if you log in as a user that's not the owner of this account right here. So I'm going to drag this off to the side, make sure everything is all secure. And let's see. And now we are back. So I just logged in as a different user. A different email and now it's telling me that my app is not set up the app is still in development mode and you don't have access to switch to register test user or ask an admin for permissions and what this really means is that your application needs to go to production mode so let me show you guys how to do that if you log back into your facebook developer account and you go into that uh, facebook application under app review, you can take your app 
from uh, not public to public. So you just confirm it and now your application is live. So that means is if I go back in here, hit perhaps it done, I think it's going to fail somewhere. So I'm gonna hit this and log in as this new user for my application. So I'm gonna continue and hit this button there. And then it will actually say login failed. So let's see what is going on here. Okay, so now that I have this new user logged in, I can restart the application and try to verify this new user in my system. And what this is going to look like is, I'm gonna hit this right here, log in, hit okay. And down here, it's going to print out the new uh, user's email address. If I log out on the top button and hit log in with the top button, it's going to show the exact same thing at the very bottom. So that's how, <laughs> that's how you would take your application from development to what I would probably call production. Okay, that is it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, make sure to leave a thumbs up for the video and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. In the next video of the series, we're gonna talk about how to install the Firebase SDK using CocoaPods and also how to create a Firebase user from our logged in Facebook credentials and the Facebook user that we're getting back. And one more thing, if you want to download the code and the project for all of the things that you saw today, uh, make sure to visit the link below and you can see a kind of written up tutorial guide on how to do all of this. And there you can find the download link for the project. Um, that's it for me today. Keep on coding and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.